Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you guys View Replay Cast number 71. And um, it's it's there, guys. Don't panic. It's there. It's just loading very slowly on my part. Um, but it'll show up once it shows up. I'll keep it up for a few seconds. Be closing my door as usual, and there we go. The game pops up. So let's go ahead and jump ourselves right into this front and center. Oh, by the way, I need to I need to go ahead and change that thing because that's been there for like forever like forever ever I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the the overlay for the cover of the people who are on my friends list because that is kind of a spoiler i do agree who, with whoever said that but i mean come on guys like i could at least edit it by now i mean jeez it's been like what 20 months so anyway the game's starting let's not worry about that let's just jump ourselves into this game because the timer is showing but you guys can't see it so haha take that and let's hide everything else <laughs> So, I see a Meepo picked up, so I'm pretty excited about this already. Um, this game, what, oh man. Alright, so, I want to say every, like, I want to say I haven't casted a few replay casts in about a month. So this game is actually pretty darn old. Um, I'm not sure which patch this is. I wish I could know. But I think it's before Meepo got to, um, got the update to where his ult is at level 4 instead of level 6. So yeah, guys, it's that old, relative to when this video is recorded. So keep that in mind uh, when we start doing a cast, I'm going to try to keep that in mind as well. I don't know what patch that was. It was like just before the patch. Mmm, tea. <coughs> <coughs> Too much tea. <coughs> Alright. So... Right. One thing I was going to talk about was uh, Casters Network, which is officially up and on YouTube, so we have stuff getting done over there, and I'm actually, at the, right after this Prepare video, I'm going to be recording battle. a video for Castnet, because I got to do my seven trials. And for those who are wondering what the seven trials are, those are caster trials. Seven trials, caster trials, same thing. Um, but it's basically just a set of, I guess, kind, so, kind of sort of ridiculous uh, scenario situations that you have to cast through and the whole goal of it is to test your casting skills and push it to the limit um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be really excited once I get to the quad cast which is the fourth one the fourth trial which is basically four people in the same game casting at the same time oh man it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be failure everywhere and it's gonna be jokes galore but I don't expect it to be functional I gotta be honest guys the quad cast is probably gonna be the most ridiculous one but anyway so from for those who are interested in the caster trials, the whole all seven trials are the first one's a solo trial, second one is a audio only, the third bad. one is a POV only, which means you have to lock the POV. Like if I were to follow Bristle, I would have to go to player perspective. And okay, let's follow. Let's follow Centaur. And basically this is my entire cast. I do the entire cast from this perspective. And I had to talk about what he's looking at, what he's doing, why he's doing what he's doing, what's going on around him. All from this perspective, it is going to be a challenging one. I, I can see that one being not that fun for many people, but it's about, it's, about, it's about expanding those skills, guys. And then there's a fifth one. No, the fourth one's a quad cast. The fifth one is the post solo. The sixth one... No, the fifth one is a dual cast. The sixth one is a post solo, and the seventh one is a reflection, which is just an interview, um, if you decide to do that. So anyway, enough about the caster trials, guys. We're talking about a game right here in front of us, and this game was sent in by a viewer, and as always with the viewer replay cast, I'm not going to tell you guys who sent it in until the Double very damage. end, because the general assumption is the person who sent it in is probably on the team that won, and we don't want to spoil it here. Well, I don't want to spoil it, so I know you guys probably don't want to spoil it either. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce these people on the map. We see Wolk at symbol s on that storm spirit mid moving over to lunar up top we see slash on her moving over into the jungle we see on this lone druid who does have a bear we see um guns or you um guns on him down on this death problem who's actually not playing mid we see lot well she's like having i don't know she's doing some exorcist type stuff oh, we see lava's uh on death prophet and last but not least, all in this Centaur War Runner, we see Ben Q, who actually just missed his stun on top of the Bristleback, but he's actually taking quite a bit of damage, he needs to be a little bit careful. Um, but yeah, but he, Ben Q is on the Centaur. And speaking of a Wind Runner, um, on the side of the dire, we have Pikachu at high. I'm sorry, Pikachu oh high on that Wind Runner. Moving over to Bristleback, we see Husky on Bristle. Down in the mid, we see Chocolate Cake 
That's right, guys. Because chocolate cake is awesome. Not really. Uh, on that razor. Moving up top, we see Sir's Critical Panda. Because who wants a normal panda? I want a critical panda. And oh my gosh, guys, this, this is like proves on point of how far gone this pat or this game is. This is a big camp. Keep in mind with the new recent changes to Dota 2 uh, relative to when this video is recorded, this is a small camp now. So this one, this, this match is a little teeny, teeny bit outdated. And uh, I think the last person to introduce is of course the Mapo. We see Jet Ratman on him. And I actually got to change my settings really fast, but I'm trying to make sure I don't miss the first blow. Actually, actually make these guys look like you're getting a little bit aggressive. Stormspeed taking a whole bunch of damage. Razor just needs a few right clicks to actually get a kill. He does have 70 free damage. He actually has a whole bunch more. Stormspeed should be going down here. Two right clicks. One more right clicks on Razor needs, but he decides not to go for it. Meanwhile, down bottom, Death Prime taking a whole bunch of damage. She does go down first, and she actually tries to go for a kill on some Bristle, but he's a little bit too tanky. And now Bristle is actually getting chased by Centaur. Centaur does not have a double edge, but he, did, he still goes down anyway. Because the creeps are a little bit too OP when they're hitting them from the front. And moving up top, we got Luna. She's actually took quite a bit of damage. I don't know if anybody died up here. And by the looks of it, yeah, Elder Titan died. So, people dying all over the map at the same exact time. Perfect time for me to go ahead and change my settings, right? Because I was totally about to do that. Let's see. Let's do this. Game. Interface. This. This. There we go. And we're back to buttery smooth scrolling because who doesn't want butter and smoothness? Because when you put butter over everything, it makes it smooth and not all greasy. Like it actually does. That's always misleading. They never put that in the fine print. Yes, it's buttery smooth, but it's also greasy as crap. I mean, anyway, talking about things around the map, we got a Razor versus Storm Spirit mid, of course. Um, Razor actually should be winning his lane, because Storm Spirit did have to go back home by the looks of it to actually get his stuff. And Razor has way more gold left uh, in his bank account. Meanwhile, on top, Mapo. It looks like he's going Radiant's for the Tranquil Boots, and I don't know if this is pre- uh, yeah, this, this is post, this is post Tranquil Boots, uh, change. So, uh, at least those are changed. So not everything is crazy. But anyway, speaking of things that are going crazy, we got Death Rapper running, running around with her hands above her head, like, oh my god, what is going on? And she's actually taking quite a bit of damage. Bristle back going to full main mode, only cool is level 1, but it doesn't matter. He's going to be able to get a kill if he gets one more cool spray, but he's not going to be able to get it. That might have been a double kill for him, because these guys had three stacks, and that would have been a lot of damage going both of their ways. But thankfully for them, thankfully for them, uh, Bristle was not able to pop another quill. <laughs> pop a quilly. Walls. So my Meepo is still going to go ahead and stick with those Tranquil Boots because I guess it's the best kind of boost to go for. Not really sure. Razor should have dove for that one. Um, yes, he would have died. Yes, Storm Spirit would have gotten credit for the kill. And yes, Razor would have got experience if Storm Spirit wouldn't have. But, oh wait, sorry. But, but, Storm Spirit would not have gotten credit for the XP, and Razor would have gotten credit for the XP. That's what I'm going to say. Meanwhile, on top, we got Meepo. He's almost level 6, trying to build up his Tranquil Boots. He's still trying to get his farm. He actually has his Tranquil Boots. Just needs to have him bought to him, which the Courier is nice. doing as of now. Now, looking at the last hits of the Nines, we can see that there are a lot of last hits on Lone Druid, who's actually in the jungle, hanging out with his bear. And these guys are barely going to be able to get the kill on this. Oh, I'm clever, I know. But at this point, it might be good for Lone Druid to just go ahead and send this bear back on home and then have a, a teleport to him, because that is bear level 2. He does have the return ability available for him. Uh, anyway, moving on down bottom, we got a DC coming up on Bristle back, so Bristle's all the way back home. Uh, he's going to be taking a while to get back down there. But by the looks of his build, he's going for a Vanguard? Or, I don't know, he can go for anything. Um, Vanguard is a decent item on Bristleback. Uh, Hooded Defiance is a better item, yes. But if Vanguard, it, it helps you, if you can get it fast, it helps you out a lot in the early stages. And then it just lets you build up to those bigger items because you just survived for so freaking long. <laughs> Moving on mid, Razor hasn't really made any budgets as to what he's going to be going for. Um, he doesn't have boots yet. That's how hardcore this guy is. But by the looks of his items, he could be going for a Hand of Midas. Uh, which I think at this time it cost uh, 1900 as opposed to the 2500 or whatever. Oh, okay, there we go. 2005, yeah, 2050. Uh, so the recipe is still 1150. So it's just after that. It, it's, it's a lot of in betweens in this game. It's kind of interesting to cast this one. I will say that. After so long. I think it's actually before the Storm Spirit update, to be honest, because Storm Spirit looks really tiny. Which tells me that this might be the, like the old Storm Spirit model is supposed to be there, but they put that new one there because the old one's out of the game or something. I don't really know. 
Radiance Middle Tower is oh, under attack. Had to speak wrong, sorry. So anyway, down bottom, Lone Druid is still farming with this bear. Um, like I said, he needs to go ahead and send this bear home instead of resummoning, because resummoning is not what you want to do if you don't have to. And uh, he should be able to farm up a small camp by himself. Fine. And then have the bear bring him back a healing self. <laughs> Meanwhile, down bottom, Death Prophet still got her hands in the air. Just like, yo, bro, I don't give a care. It's 2014, and let's do this. And up top, Meepo just doing a little poof damage. Uh, we got Elder Titan doing a little a lot of damage with his frozen sigil. Yeah, that's legit, guys. That's legit. It's a frozen sigil, totally. Meanwhile, all around, let's see. Not, not really much going on just yet. Um, Bristleback and Winter just had to back up a little bit. A trolley, oh, sorry, Ganks coming on down bottom, so we got a rotation coming from Storm Spirit. Uh, this just might be a kill, but I really wish he was level 6 before he did this, because then he'd be able to zip in and pop his... Uh, pop his vortex and then be able to get a kill easily on top of something like windrunner before she actually gets a win run off because she'll get chain stunned or silence which death prophet doesn't have a silence just one silence is all death prophet needs to be as destructive as possible <clears throat> especially when you're trying to go for a gank but storm spirit is waiting around the corner wasting a whole bunch of time lone Drew shows up as well so all five or sorry four people from the radiant side are down bottom trying to kill these guys down on the dire side but the dire is playing very 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 cautious I wouldn't be surprised if one would just tossed the power shot just because uh, she actually Maybe might be getting cut off. Yeah, she will be getting cut off. Storm is going to go for a static or go for a vortex. Vortex does fly through. Wind Runner, she does have Wind Runner. She is, she is going to be able to jump away. Nobody's really going to follow up in time. And Bristol Bike does throw out the snot just to back them on up. So that's really about it. Uh, Racer is still mid getting the free farm. Phase Boots purchased up first, so that was Radiance his bottom item choice. Tower is under attack. And we got an item coming to Luna. And by the looks of it, it is her boots. So she has Phase Boots of her own. You know, Storm Spirit, still level 5, lost a whole bunch of XP relative to Razor. Like, if you look at his levels, Storm Spirit is level 5, Razor is a whole entire 2 levels at least. Oh, it's 3 levels, sorry. 3 levels above Storm Spirit now. And look, Meepo is level 6. And he has his ulti, so he has the other Meepo running on back home to get some more mana because who doesn't need more mana than Meepo? That's the thing, hold on, is it, if it breaks for one Meepo, does, no, never mind. I was to say, if it breaks for one Meepo, does it break for all Meepos? Let's talk about Tranquil Boots, by the way. Messing top. Good tea is good. So, as far as things to talk about right now, not really much as usual, but um, we can take a look at the, all the graphs, so we can see the last hits, we can see the Lone Druid leading on that. That is a very misleading lemon because Lone Druid is farming in the jungle, which jungle creeps are worth less. To put that into perspective, they were like, okay, let's let's wait till the next camp comes around so I can put it in better perspective. Because that creep was worth 58 gold, as you saw right there, but lane creeps are worth like on average 40 gold per creep. So this is a whole entire 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40. Or sorry, 50, you saw 50 right there. <clears throat> anyway, uh, meanwhile, on top we got a lot, a lot of damage going towards Meepo. Meepo will be going down. Storm Spirit did finally get. No, he doesn't have level 6, but he has a Haste Room. And now he has level 6, so he has ulti up. So he'll be able to gank a little bit easier. Speaking of ganking, moving on down bottom, we got Death Rock in a little bit of trouble. No silence on her. Since our wall runner ulti does go through, so they can try to run away, but they do get shackled together. Beautiful shackle for one runner. And that is a dead Centaur. Double kill for Razor. Popping that ulti, able to give himself a lot of negative armor and also a lot of kills on top of whoever was there. And yes, guys. Yes, guys. Storm Spirit's ulti does. Break your armor per shot it hits you for. That is something that I totally forgot about, and I didn't realize it until there's a razor who's destroying me. As a, I don't know who I was playing, but whoever I was playing, I saw my armor go down. I was like, "What? It breaks my armor? What's this? Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm a noob." And then I per then we uh, proceeded to lose the game. Anyway, enough about me, guys. Enough about me. Uh, Luna's up top. She's going for the helmet of Dominator first, Radiance which um, is in this case. In this case, I would have much preferred to see her go for that, uh, go for the Helmet of Iron Will before she went for the Morgan Mask. And the main reason for this is because a lot of people has misconception that uh, life still is going to keep you alive in the lane. And the answer to that early game is probably not. Um, regen is Radiant's much more reliable. Regen is, is what attack. you want. Like if you take for instance Bristle, oh, never mind. I was gonna say if you take for instance Bristleback, he has regen, but he doesn't. Um, never mind. Ignore that. Bristleback should have some form of regen by now. Messing talk. Should. Missing okay, let's look at Meepo, because that's a perfect example. So Meepo has regen out the wazoo right now because he has his tranquil boots and because 
These are the Tranquil Boots. Oh, okay, these are these are the uh, before patch Tranquil Boots. Bombs gone missing, just so you know. See, see, that's good to Dyer's know. Middle tower that's good to is know. Under attack. Oh, um, we, we got a wild connector stuck on the other side. He's trying to get through. Um, oh, we're getting body blocked like a boss. Luna shows up, gets a right click or two on top of him, and then runs away. Because she doesn't want to die. And Lundra does go for the hand of Midas Meepo. Able to get himself a few poofs, and uh, he'll be able, to pop, yeah, be able to pop his Tranquil Boots to heal himself up. <clears throat> But like I was saying with Luna, um, life steal she life steals for 15% of her damage, and her damage right now is actually decent because of her lunar blessing. But her damage is like a hundred, so she heals for 15 per hit, and also her glaze bounces around a little. Bit. Oh, she has well, two points in that, so it bounces around twice. So let's say she heals for 20 HP every time she throws it a right click. Now, see, by anybody's standard, that's a decent amount of HP. That's 20 free HP every time you right click. But you have to keep in mind that she's probably going to get punched in the face a few times while she's punching other things in the face. Which means that the creeps, they hit for probably roughly 22. So Luna essentially heals for zero um, while she's hitting. So she has to hit something to heal up like that. And she runs Missing the risk of getting hit by other things. So Elder Titan's Astral Spirit, for instance, it hits for a whole entire 140 damage when it runs through her. After reductions probably hits for more like 115, or sorry, 105, because 25% uh, built in magic resistance for all the heroes. So, if you keep that in mind, Luna is going to be taking a whole bunch more damage as she's healing, and she has to actively hit things to heal up. Now, she had a Helmet of Iron Will that gives her like 3 regen, if I'm not mistaken. And why is it like this? That gives her like 3 regen or something like that, which is not the greatest in the world, That's sure. But it is passive, which means it's always active. All she has to do is just sit still and it works. Dyer's top and she's able to stay nice attack. and healthy without having to put her life at risk. Missing middle. So anyway, all this goes along with it say, if you don't have that much damage, life still is not going to do much for you. Luna doesn't have that much damage. Well, relative to this game, she has a lot of damage. But she doesn't have that much damage as far as... As far as uh, pushing the point that she should go for some life steal, in my honest opinion, she should have gone for the helmet of iron will first. She might be a lot healthier, and she also have five extra armor, which might help her a lot. Versus, <laughs> never mind, because all these guys on top are doing magic damage to her. That's why I say, which might help her a lot, a lot versus all this physical right click. But not really much. Anyway, moving on mid, we got Storm Spin a little bit of trouble. Razor, it does have a static link. He is, oh man, Storm is out of mana. This would be a dead, dead Storm Spin. The race is gonna fall down as well. This should have. It happened a few times earlier, that way Razor could have, could have been able to get his stuff a little bit earlier, he would have died as well. And when Luna going to be taking a whole bunch of damage from that ulti, she's going to do a whole bunch of damage to Meepo. Meepo going to turn around and run away. Luna does throw out the nice little, nice little Luna beam and does get the kill, but she does lose her life in the process because the other Titan has an Astral Spirit, which is OP as crap. And Death Prophet finally put her hands down. Jeez. Oh, I lied. Never mind. She only puts her hands up when she moves. She's like, she's like Ricky Bobby. He's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Guys, what do I do with my hands? And just puts them all in the face and start touching the mic in the other person's face and yeah. If if you guys don't get the reference, you just won't get the reference. But it's a funny movie, it's, it's most parts. The ballad, the ballad of Ricky Bobby, I think that's what it was. Or no, Talladega Nights, the ballad of Ricky Bobby. Go check it out if you haven't. I'm not saying how, I'm just saying go check it out. <laughs> So, let's get a message. Let's see what this message is. If it's important or not. And by important, I mean, do I have to Dyer's answer middle now? tower is under attack. No. Here I am. Oh my god, Dota, what are you doing? Anyway, let's not do that. We gotta fight half down the bottom. We got a whole bunch of people dying. Centaur gets a nice little stun on top of two. And that's to be it should be a dead bristle here very soon. Bristle does go down to the center ultra from the backside ironically. And now we got death Rob, she does go down. She did pop her ulti, a lot of damage going away, but that damage is gone. Now Lunju is gonna be losing all that armor. Five, negative seven, negative eight, ne oh no, it changed creeps. And now this should be a dead lone druid. No, Razor does go down first, the bear doing too much. Razor <laughs> Lone Druid just barely surviving that. Dyer's structure so no fortified. my altar yes your altar it did change targets now we got Luna on top she does go to sleep and she also takes a whole bunch of net damage plus poof damage she should be going down because she can't run away geo strike a little bit too strong for her and that is a dead Luna and guys that is how you kill a Luna I'm trying to see who this message is from oh okay it's 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 from somebody that I don't have to add or somebody I don't have to respond to right now they're just asking questions and I'm gonna just promptly ignore it Love you, whoever that was, but I'm not going to tell anybody who it is, so you don't feel bad. Anyway. <clears throat> and oh yeah, yeah, as far as that lone druid versus 
um, Razor thing. Oh, uh, what Razor should have done in that instance is he should he probably well okay hindsight's twenty twenty yes, but he should have static linked the bear so that way the bear wouldn't do any damage. Yes, he still would get rooted, but the bear hurts a lot because uh, almost all the oh, the damage is on the bear. Lone Druid he hits for seventy eight and he's in melee form so he's not gonna do anything anyway. Uh, but the bear's doing all the work. So if you static link the bear as a razor, then the bear is officially no worries after this. Anyway, other time gonna be going now. He does pop his ulti just to just to spite whoever was there. I think he almost no, he didn't catch anything. Nothing was caught inside his ulti. But other times ulti will be on cooldown now for 87 seconds, 86, 85 seconds. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And the top tower is finally going under, going under attack, and this just might be the first tower claimed this game. Speaking of claiming things this game, we got Bristleback claiming his space, claiming his Dyer's dominance. He does have those power trades available if he wants to go buy them, or he can save up for that Vanguard fully. I think he needs to finish the power trades because that gives him a little bit more than just the raw HP, which, yeah, the raw HP is good, but it gives him attack speed as well, which means that if he does decide to be aggressive, he can actually do some damage. Speaking of doing damage down bottom, we got a we got a dive going on, one run, a beautiful shackle, catch on top of two, center ulti does fly through, Bristleback caught in the midst of it, uh, he does not get hit with it, yes, he does finally get hit with it, Storm Spirit pops out the pull, and that is a dead bristle, so good rotations coming in from them, uh, albeit a little bit, a little bit sloppy, but they did not lose anybody in that fight. And they, um, the only people who lost anything was the Dire side. They lost three entire people. They lost a one runner, Razor, and a Bristle. And to be honest, um, that dive it was questionable at first. Um, but one runner got the shackle, Dyer's which is nice. But it is, is only a shackle attack. level two, which means it doesn't last for seven hours. Which if it would have last for seven hours, then they might have been able to get the kill. Dyer's anyway, since we're popping inside those tranquil boots, attack. because oh my gosh, bring them back flashbacks. Who doesn't love the tranquil boots? 170 HP heal. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And Oli Meepo has Tranquil Boots as well. He's going for Ag's first. <laughs> Which, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. See, as far as me playing Meepo, I don't. So, yeah. Top tower <laughs> so I guess I can't attack. really speak that much. Um, I have seen people play Meepo and I have seen them go for items before they go for the axe first. Actually, when we got Razor in a little bit of trouble, he does take the ulti of Stone Spirit. Beautiful ulti coming up for Elder Titan. He does miss and he does throw out, throw out his stomp in the worst spot possible. And now Luna turns around, throws out her ulti, trying to get a kill on top of this, but so many creeps around. Dear Jesus, they're not going to be able to do anything. And Luna's in a little bit of trouble now because Bristol shows up. Razor gets a static link and a lot of damage going towards Luna. She's getting slowed. It's not at once, not at twice, and she goes down. Meanwhile, Stone Spirit's on the backside. Armor broken. He goes down. Armor's tucking again. El uh, Centaur Warner blinks in, does a little bit of damage. He won't really be able to do much. He throws out the double edge on top of a uh, razor. Now he's in a little bit of trouble because he got caught in the stomp and the stomp is doing a whole bunch of work. And now we got Husky on that bristle, able to get a whole bunch of damage on top of Centaur. Centaur does go down and boom, goes everybody who's alive. Meepo shows up as well. Death Rapper Ulti is on the run, but it's not going to hit anybody because they're on the run. And geez, meanwhile down bottom, we got a bear versus a wind runner. Shaco does fly a wind runner and the bear is going to continue to chase. Now it can't attack. She can throw a few pop shots if she wanted to. Just to make Lone Drew's life I don't know, a little bit more difficult. But a lot of things happened, and a lot of death happened on the side of the Radiant. And oh look, Death Prophet, she's like, ah, they died, oh no. And finally, Bristleback buys those power treads. Took them for freaking ever. Oh god, that's not tea. Oh. Man. All right, so you know how when you make tea, you put like a giant amount of sugar, and then you still don't taste it because you didn't stir it up. So it's got like a, a jackpot of sugar. Yeah. Okay. All right, it's too much for me, <clears throat> and I like sweet stuff. <clears throat> it's fine, guys. I have juice here too, because. Anyway, meanwhile down uh, mid, mid, we got Elbow Titan taking a whole bunch of damage. He does get called static room, does get stomped up by Storms, or does get stomped up by Centaur, and does go down. And down bottom we got a four man, five, six, how many meeples here? Three, three plus two, three plus three, six man push. We got a six man push coming on down bottom. Uh, and the people are coming to defend it are Luna with her loser, so we got a three, oh, sorry, two women, and now we got Luna running away, she's in a little bit of trouble. Uh, the wind run does come from Winner, she wants to try and get into better position. Can't throw a shot, but she needs to. 
Radiance Courier goes down, so a big, big catch for these guys. Now we got the bear losing all of his damage, hitting for a negative something, but beautiful blinking from Centaur. Holy crap, got a nice little double up to stop everybody as well. Ne needs a little bit more damage. Kills the Miko, kills the Razor because he decided to right click and he goes down. Meanwhile, around the backside, we got Wind Runner trying to run away, but she does get caught out and does go down. And boy, talk about an excellent fight for the Radiant. That was a, that was a beautiful, that was a beautiful fight all set up Radiant's on the back of Centaur Warrunner. He blinked denied. in at the perfect moment. Everybody on the dire side was clumped up perfectly for him. He stomped, he double-edged, and he attack. killed two people. Because Dota's a violent game. Dota is a very, very violent game. And no, look, he pops his Tranquil Boots and heals up. This is why Tranquil Boots got their chance, Dyer's because it was a little bit too good. It was, it was originally meant for supports to use to run from lane to lane and heal themselves up with something that's not that expensive because they need regen. Well, that's at least how I think of it. But um, when you when you have people like Centaur and Luna and Anti Mage and Meepo just carrying around casually and popping them whatever they want, as it's time to it's time to change it a little bit because their life should be difficult, not easy. Because they're carries slash initiators slash slight supports if you play them that way. <laughs> So anyway, all that said, I do miss the old Trunker Boots because they were awesome. Now we got Stormspin in a little bit of trouble. He does go to use the Secret Shop to buy himself a nice little item, and he does zip out because he does have his ulti, so he is fine, but the whole entire Dire side, they thought they were going for Roshan. They thought the Radiant was going for Roshan, but there's no Rush going on. And oh look, they have an Observer Ward here. Ooh, he looks cool. It's like, it's like it's a person standing on, or his eyeball standing on a statue thing, or pillar, a pillar of trust. So taking a quick look at the items, we got a Lone Druid going for a Radiance, which I do not like at all. I do think in this game he needs to go ahead and go for something with a lot of AoE damage because Meepo suffers greatly versus AoE damage, which is why he has a built-in 35% magic resistance as opposed to everybody else's 25 um, just to prove that point, let's go and take a look at his magic resistance. Boom, 34 point, or okay, 34 percent, whatever, 35 percent magic resistance, which means that he feels 35 percent less. He only feels 65 percent of it. Anyway, we got Centaur once again blinking and getting a beautiful, beautiful initiation on top of everybody. Does pop his blade mount a little bit too early, but Meepo does go down anyway, so nobody really cares. Elder Titan ulti catches everybody. Centaur's done a little bit of trouble, taking a whole bunch of damage. Needs to be backing up a little bit. Stomp comes from Elder Titan, does do a little bit of damage, but not enough to kill the Death Prophet. Death Prophet will be finally going down. Razor goes down as well. Luna taking a lot of damage, doing a lot of damage as well. Razor getting himself an ultra double kill, and Alone Jew got himself an ultra kill because he was just alive and the bears are doing whatever the heck he freaking wanted. And that is a dead everybody. And honestly, at this point, um, yeah, Lone Drew is keeping on uh, holding to the relic. I do Radiant's see why he's holding to it now because attack. he's staying in range for him. Um, but I, th I thought he was in melee for me. He had it before. So I was about to say he should have that relic on the bear, but nope. Now he doesn't have to have it. He has a Radiance bear now. Radiance top tower. Look how shiny fallen. the bear is. It's just shiny. Look at it. It's killing things. Such an adorable bear. I barely notice it's killing people. Oh, the bear jokes can happen all day, and you guys will barely like them. <laughs> I was trying to think of another joke with Bristleback, but it didn't work. Anyway, Luna go for a shadow, goes for a shadow blade. She's uh, Elder Titan built himself a Hood of Defiance, <clears throat> which is a nice item to have versus something like a Star Spirit and a Centaur. Um, but honestly, it's not going to do anything versus Death Prophet because her ghosts are all physical. Um, yeah, it, it does stop the Cryptic Swarm, sure. Well, the Cryptic Swarm does hurt for quite a bit. I mean, it hits for only 300 damage, and it's like on a line, and it's a cone type thing, and it hurts a lot. But, as far as her ultimate goes, that's all physical damage, so you need a lot of armor um, when you're going against her, or just kill her fast. Well, she should be able to die fast. But she's getting a bloodstone soon. I mean, that's probably that's proper ulti. The ghosts are out. Now Meepo's in a little bit of needs to back up a little bit. There's no fortify left for the Radiant just yet. They need, like, a whole entire... 21 seconds, but the tower's already gone. That's everything dead. Now we got Bristle going for the dive. He's trying to go for the kill on top of Death Prophet. He's actually taking quite a bit of damage from Razor's here as well. Uh, now we got a Razor plus a Death Prophet. Oh, sorry, Razor plus a Bristle trying to chase the Death Prophet. Death Prophet does get, called, uh, does get the ulti from Centaur trying to run away, but not enough. Meanwhile, blinking from uh, uh, Centaur Warmer and catching everybody once again. Not everybody dead just yet, so he does go down first, and nobody's dead on the side of the dive just yet. Actually, other time went down. Now we got Meepo in a little bit of trouble. Brave trying to get the kill on top of him. Just a little bit more burn is all he needs, but he's not going to be able to get anything to burn to 
himself. And Rage is taking a whole bunch of damage. He will be trying to run away. He will be getting burned down to the ground, and the bear is able to get the kill. And now the bear is trying to go for a kill. Until one runner, she will not be able to go get burned down. Lone Druid trying to get one more right click. Said, "Bro, you killed my bear." And he's going to change to his ultimate form. Otherwise, he's going to die. But it looks like he's going to die anyway because Bristle plus Meepo are here. The net does miss, but it doesn't matter. The power shot does hit, and that's a dead Bristle. And here comes Storm Spirit zapping on in, catches himself a husky, uh, which is just a Bristle back. And Bristle trying to run away. Storm Spirit sadly doesn't have enough damage. Does miss his right click on top of the correct thing. Now Meepo's poofing it with all his allies, and they are all back in the way. No blink dagger on Meepo yet. But by the looks of it, he's not going to be going for one. He's going for Vlad's next. But jeez, man. Talk about talk about a decent fight. Um, all in all, only three people died. Um, Lone Druid died, which is a huge hit to the Radiance push. Yes, but it doesn't really matter much because he already has his Radiance. I'm over here. And because he already has his Radiance. Oh, he also has a Vlad's now. So Vlad's for Lone Druid, for his bear, and for Centaur. And also for the extra damage on Luna and plus Storm Spirit and Death Power to a certain extent. So Sanjin Yasha was the item choice on Razor. <clears throat> That's actually a very interesting item choice. <clears throat> well, Sanjin Yasha is still a sub, a subpar, a mediocre item. That's the best word to put for it. Mainly because it costs a lot of money. It doesn't really give you all that much as far as what each individual piece gives you. As opposed to going for straight up for a Heaven's Halibur or just for a Mantis style. It's kind of for those people who are confused, like a Razor, who wants movement speed but also wants HP. And the, uh, and the MAME is great when he has Static Link on. But anyway, all that aside, I'm um, still a mediocre item in the sense that it costs a lot of money and it takes a lot to build it. <clears throat> and by the time you build it, you might as well build yourself a Heaven's Halibur or a Mantis style. Uh, so, yeah, it's still so part of him. I'm going to keep saying that because I'm trying to find out my point. Oh, there's my point. Right. But the thing about it is that it gives you... It gives you a little bit of everything. It gives you that movement speed, which is great for Razor, so he can keep chasing. It gives him the HP, which is great, so that he can keep chasing. Or, sorry, so he can stay alive in the big fights. It also gives him the main, which is nice. And it can transition to a Heaven's Halibur and Men's Style, because you can disassemble a Sanji Asha. Because, guys, let's be honest. If you couldn't disassemble a Sanji Asha, that would be the most disappointing thing in the game, because it's literally just two swords crossed. If you couldn't, if you couldn't, uh, I'll be disappointed. Anyway, Death Prophet in a little bit of trouble. She does get a nice little sound to stop Razor. Razor gonna take a whole bunch of damage. No right clicks for you. He does go down. Storm Spirit, beautiful stuff going on him. Now we got Meepo going down because the AoE damage plus the Centaur stomp and the double edge. And now everybody getting called the L Titan ulti. L Titan does get a nice little sleep on top of three people. Winner of power shot kills one. And that's a Storm Spirit. Now we got Luna ulti count bouncing on the top of everybody's head. A boom, people go down. Winner of was fantastic, but guys, she most certainly lied. The woman does. The woman dealt for test too much. She did go down. The sounds of how bristle. He's gonna keep running away. He did decide to build the Vanguard, which is a decent item to pick up for I guess this time in the game. But it's about to become less effective because the damage is coming up for Lone Druid. His bear is hitting for a whole entire 73 plus 94, whatever that is. Centaur is hitting for a whole bunch of damage, relatively speaking. And now we got Death Prophet. She's hitting her right click is really decent right now. Plus the Vladimir's aura is actually helping her damage out a lot. So <clears throat> all in all, <clears throat> blocking. 40 damage is not really going to do much when everybody's hitting you for like a thousand. Which is why... Okay, okay. I'll take a step back. Alright, let's talk about this, guys. So, armor. Armor is really good late game because it it reduces the incoming physical damage by a percentage. Radiance now, percentages tower is are under all attack. good in games because they scale into the late game. Not necessarily the early game, but the late game. Which means that if somebody hits you for 10 damage, you'll block like... 1% of it, or sorry, 7% of it. If somebody hits you for 100 damage, then you'll still block 7% of it, but you'll block even more of that damage if they hit you for a lot higher. So having a lot of armor increases your uh, resistance to physical right clicks, or just physical damage, by a percentage. So the numbers are, for every one point of armor you have, you, effectively, you increase your effective HP versus right clicks by 6% or 7%. I think, I think it's I want to say 6%. I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's either 6 or 7. So, anywho. At any rate, what this basically means is that uh, for Luna, because the numbers are right there, and I don't, I can't do the math right. Um, it looks like, I don't know. I can't tell. 
<laughs> uh, but anyway, we got uh, we got this. Her age is going to be going to storm. She does zip in, try to catch somebody else, but not going to be able to catch anybody else. But does get the centaur, centaur, not centaur. Let's get the L10. L10 does have the ulti. Not going to be able to drop it. Does go down before anything happens. Now the age is already getting popped. Miko popping that already prematurely like a boss. Uh, meanwhile, the fight still happening on the back side. Bruce is back in the speed, kills the top of a few people. Gets one kill. Might be able to get another kill. These guys do keep pulling him to death. And now we got centaur, not centaur. Now we got a. Uh, yeah, Centaur does go down to the Meepo, got surrounded by all five of them, because five versus one is not fair. Now we got one going to be going down, trying to get the bear to go away. The bear just barely getting the kill on top of her. And now we got Bristleback, going to be going down right in front of his own tower, right at the steps of his own door. And Death Rocker does run away because she has all the heals in the world. Now Meepo's getting burned to death by Lone Druid. Lone Druid trying to run away. The Meepo's going to be able to get all the poof damage. The poof damage is massive, and Lone Druid is still trying to run away. The bear is actually dead. Lone Druid did resummon before he be down um, before he went down. No, he didn't. Never mind, he popped a rabbit. I was about to say. I was about to say if Lone Druid resummon, that'll be huge. A huge hit because that means his radiance will be a fix a fi a fi a That means Lone Druid's radiance will officially be on cooldown for two minutes. Which is not what you want to have happen when that's your biggest item. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Alright, so I was talking about armor. So you um, reduce the incoming damage by 6%. Let's go 6% because that sounds better. Or it sounds more correct than 7. I think I think you need 7 agility to get 1 armor. That's my view when I'm getting into those numbers mixed up with. So yeah, so you have that. So if you have 10 armor, you reduce the incoming damage from physical attacks by 60%. Which the number actually is like scales a little bit. And it's, 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 it's like a little curve going on. So... Like once you hit like 30 armor, it doesn't really change much. Like you're going to reduce it by 75 percent. That's it. Something like that. It's just like a cap. <clears throat> so anyway, all that goes along the way to say that if you have a lot of armor, you make yourself a lot more survivable in the late game, especially if you have a lot of HP. So going into the case of Bristle, he can block a whole bunch of 40 damage every single time he has a chance to block it. And I've I've done these numbers before a long time ago, and I don't feel like doing them again. And I don't know why I'm still explaining this because it's going to be complicated as crap. It's going to be like above a lot of people's heads. I'm not saying you guys are stupid or anything, but just like, you guys don't care. Probably. But anyway, he's blocking 40 damage per right click uh, versus somebody who's hitting for a whole entire 200 damage right now. So if he blocks 40 damage from 200, he's going to block 40 damage from 200. Which means he's going to fill a whole entire 160 every single time. But if he blocks a percentage of it, say he blocked 50% of that 200 damage. Um, when she hits for 200, that means he only feels 100. So now you see where it comes in, where percentage is really, really, really good in the late game. <clears throat> so wait, we got uh, we got Elder Titan taking a whole bunch of damage. Does get chain stunned to death and does go down. Easy kill is easy. Don't really have to comment on that one, but yeah, he's got surrounded by a storm spray plus a oh or a centaur warner, and Luna showed up as well. She got the kill. And storm is gonna zip in, try to go for. Nope, nobody's here. Uh, he does have a bloodstone, so he does have some nice amount of region. Luna gonna scout things out with her shadow blade, and this is before the shadow blade got changed. That's right, guys. A 28 second cooldown. It lasted for a whole entire 12 seconds. Nowadays, it's like a 12 second duration. It, it, the cooldown is like 50 seconds or something like that. It's something crazy. <clears throat> so you can't just shadow blade in, do a little bit of damage, and shadow blade out easily. But yeah, let's go and talk about the ward covers because the Dyer has some pretty beastly wards. They got a nice ward here, which means they can see it all up in the Radiant Jungle. They can know where Luna's farming and when she's trying to farm. They can also they also have a nice ward here so they can see who's entering and exiting or going towards the Roshan Pit if they so desire. Uh, meanwhile, in the jungle, we got a Razor. Not Razor, we got a Centaur Warner plus a Storm Spirit. Trying to find the Bristle. Centaur. Looks like he missed his hoof stump. <laughs> They're gonna come right back in. Death Rapper Ulti is on the, on the rise right now. She's going to be going through. She needs a silence on top of Winner and Bristle. And she does get a silence on top of Razor. So probably not the best person. But anyway, they, they will initiate on the fight. Razor does pop his blade mail and does a massive amount of damage. Back to uh, <coughs> Centaur. And Bristle getting all those cool sprays on top of everybody. Luna has a whole entire six on top of her faces right now. She needs to be a little bit careful. Meepo nets on top of everybody. The ulti from Elder Titan is going to be popping out. She does miss a little bit, but it catches one whole entire Luna who shadow bladed out. Now she's going to come back to this fight. Pops her ulti. Big mistake for her. She should be going now. Her shadow blade is on cooldown right now. She's in a lot of trouble. Now the nets are coming through. The Elder Titan Astral Spirit should be coming forward in a few seconds. One second's time. It will be flying, but Menta. Not Menta. Luna should have her shadow blade by the time. This is why they changed the cooldown, guys. Because it's a little bit, it's a little bit too good. It's a little bit too good as far as uh, the cooldowns for that. But she does TP out. Nobody has a stun for her, except for Warner. She has a power shot, or she has a shackle shot, but they did not find her in time. And Luna does make it out alive. 
And oh yeah, this is before the timer changed too. This patch is before the timer change. I'm over here. So funny, Storm Schmidt's so tiny. Like he's just like a little person. Because of the wrong model and all. Let the fun begin! So like Mapo building himself a heart to get more to get more stats, because all the Meepos share a hundred percent of the stats, if I'm not mistaken. What? They sell what? No, they only share 30%? The clone meeples also gain 30% of any- oh, this sucks. Okay. See, this one sucks. It's, it's much more cooler when they share 100% because that means you can get whatever lucky people to heart, they get essentially all their strength. And it's really good for them. Uh, but anywho, it uh, looks like we will be having the army of meeples walk on towards the secret shop and then walk back on to farm up more ancients which have just spawned so they can get some more gold. Because Meepo wants his heart, and he has his heart now. I wonder if a bloodstone meeple would be a good idea. Seems like a good idea. Have infinite mana for your main meepo. And when you die, you come back in like two seconds if you get a lot of kills. That'd be cool. Anyway, hearts up on meepo. Uh, we got a blade mail up on Bristleback, which means he has more armor. He's going to be much more survivable versus the Death Prophet ulti. Um, as far as the rest of the items go, we got a blink dagger up on Centaur, which he has been using very, very, very nicely ever since he's had it. Uh, Bloodstone's up on Death Prophet plus Storm Spirit. So they are ready to go in these fights. They probably need a little bit bigger items. Like Death Robert probably really wants a heart. Uh, because that makes her a lot more survivable. And it means her ulti does a lot more damage when she survives. Uh, Muna to Luna. Shadow Blade. And she's Dyer's building herself what looks to be a Dagon for all I know. Could be a four staff. I have not a clue. Uh, she has a staff of wizardry. Which I hope she's not building eggs. Because if Luna builds an eggs, that would be very, very, very sad for me. Uh, for me to watch. And the reason I'd be sad for me to watch is because Luna's ulti is not where her main source of damage comes from late game, especially when she's level 19. On late game for Luna, her damage comes from her right clicks, and her right clicks are doing decently, but they could be doing a lot better. Like, Luna could be having some damage like a Mantis style already, or maybe even a crit if she wants to go for that. Um, but yeah, she has pretty much nothing. She has a Jaya's Shadow Blade, a Staff of Wizardry. And a home of dominator. Yeah, the fight's gonna be happening on top. We got a uh, nice little stun or a nice little net spot on top of Lone Drew. Lone Drew doesn't call the field. There's a nice little AoE ulti coming out or AoE damage coming out from Death Rocker. And there's a Meepo going, going down. All the hearts in the world. He still goes down. Razor comes into the middle fight. Does a whole bunch of damage to Death Rocker. Death Rocker does go down. Luna ulti does fly through. She does get the kill on top of Razor. Now she might be able to get the kill on top of Winner. She does get the kill in fact. And that is a dead Winner. And now we got Bristle on the run. He's in a lot of trouble. Blade Mail could get popped. Magic Wand could get popped. But Winner really matter. Elder Titan is back alive. I think. He was never involved in the fight, but they really didn't need him for the AoE stomp. And, and, um, he actually could still stomp these guys if he wanted to. Dyer's top tower has and he buys himself a poor man, or stout shield. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, Elder Titan's building himself a vanguard. Dyer's right, guys. top tower right. is under attack. Let's have this talk again. So, I spent a long time explaining why armor is better than damage block. And the main reason for it is because a lot of people's damage late game gets really, really high. Like Luna, she hits, it's not all that much, but she hits for like 200. Uh, Lone Druid, his bear hits for a whole bunch, should hit, a, I better hit for a whole bunch right now. Wow, okay, his bear doesn't hit for that much. Um, technically he does because he has a negative armor, but people, so he hits for a little bit more. So I guess the bear hits for, I don't know, 100 and, or maybe 200, about 200. Because of the negative armor. <laughs> So anyway, everybody's hitting for a lot of numbers, so when you block 40 of that damage, it's, I mean, they're still hitting for a whole 100, 160 damage, which is a lot of damage. Put, to put that into perspective, I think Elder Titan's Astral Spirit hits for 160 right now. Anyway, we got Luna going to be taking some negative damage, or sorry, some damage. She does go down to the static, or sorry, to the plasma field coming up from Razor. Death Harbor ulti does come through. She does find a few people. Ulti coming up from Central Warner. Death Harbor going to be getting caught in. Yes, she will get caught inside of it. And she's coming back into the fight. Now she's going to be getting pulled in. Now we got Storm Spirit trying to pull somebody in, but these guys are all trying to fight in the very cluster crappy fight. Uh, we got uh, Death Harbor getting surrounded. Centaur Warner running. Ulti does go through. Doesn't do anything, but Death Harbor slides a little bit faster. Centaur does blink forward. Does get shackled by Warner, but not shackled to a tree, so luckily he survives. Blade Mill gets popped by Centaur. He's going to be surrounded. 
surrounded by a whole entire gaggle of Dyer and they all go down. And now we got a lone druid. So now we got a Luna coming in full man mode, but she's a woman, so she goes down. No offense to the ladies up there. And now meanwhile on the back side, Lone Druid and his bear are just casually trying to tear down this uh tier three. And I think Lone Druid needs to go ahead and stay the course. Even if he dies, it'll be worth it. So that's just gonna leave his bear while he runs away. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. And oh yeah, he needs to use his hand minus two. Middle tower is gonna be going down here. Miko, little poofs, poofs doing a whole bunch of damage. All of that stuff going down. Um, where's the Radiance main Miko? Middle I can't tower find the main Miko. There is. Ags, Vlad, and Hunt. That's all he really wants. Stormtrooper does his forward. Just shows himself a little bit. Probably could have opened himself up to a dab, but he does go down now. He's getting caught with the net. He just does get himself a nice little zap on top of Meepo. Meepo does miss all of his damage. TP does come in from Death Rock, but she has no ulti, so I'm not too sure why she's showing up. She does get the silence on top of everybody, but not really any mana left on top of Storm Spirit to do any per foreseeable damage. And he just backs away. He's also trying to build himself an Orchids, which is very, very, very late because people are starting to build up DKBs now. Uh, Stun does come forward on top of uh, a Bash, does come forward on top of uh, uh, oh, now we got a boost coming from Meepo. Meepo wants to get the damage top of Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit getting zapped away, or getting zipped to death uh, by the, long, by the uh, Razor. Now we got the root going thrown on top of a Meepo. Uh, Lundra will be losing his bear here, and that's going to be a huge hit to his damage right now because uh, that's all his radiance, that's all his other stuff. So he's actually going to go for a right clicks, and he's able to help out kill him. Storm Spirit picking up the kill on top of that. <coughs> But for now, we're going to be seeing a, lo a no bear lone druid. <clears throat> and oh, look, lone druid has a maelstorm, which is actually slight late. Um, at least he has it, though, because that means it's going to be a lot of free damage on top of Meepo. Because it does have the whole entire five jumps. Oh, uh, four? Okay, whatever. Four jumps. Which means he can hit all five Meepos, because he's hitting the main one and then it jumps from that one to four or five other people. <clears throat> which will presumably be all the Meepos. <clears throat> Centaur is working on a Heart of Tarrasque. Uh We got a Razor who has a nothing changed since a long time ago. He has a Blade Mail and Sanjin Yasha. Uh, moving on to the Elder Titan, he has himself a Jove Endurance. He's working on that Vanguard, which I think is a very, very, very poor choice for him right now. Uh, Windrunner is working on Orchids of her own, and Storm Spirit is working on Orchids. They're on both on opposite teams. The Windrunner is a lot closer than the Storm Spirit. All she needs is just like maybe, oh, never mind, there it is. I say, all she needs is like maybe 10 gold or something. But yeah, there she is. She has herself an Orca Malevolence. Roshan will be getting beat up by Meepos, because Meepo is all about beating up that Roshan. All five of them mean that they will move on like far. Storm Spirit does zip in, loses a whole bunch of, sorry, loses a whole bunch of mana in the process. Now he gets scattered out by the Elder Titan Astral Spirit, and he should be going down. Uh, the net needs to fly from Meepo here very soon. Just make sure Storm Spirit does, uh, Storm doesn't do anything suspicious. Oh. The Luna does come in, does a whole bunch of damage, yes, but I mean, there's too many Meepos soaking up all the damage, and Luna's in a lot of trouble. She's gonna get surrounded by the, um, by the Bristles. Bristle does do a whole bunch of damage. Meepo about to be going out. Will he get the Aces in time? Yes, he will not get the Aces. Yes, he will get the Aces in time, so even if he dies, he will be coming back to life. At least. And now we got the Astro, oh, we got the other time getting the Stomp. Catching out three people, but some damage does come to a Lone so he does come back alive, and we got a lot of damage going to the Razor. His ulti's doing a lot of work on top of that bear, but it's not enough, and now we got the whole bunch of damage coming on top of everybody back in the pit. The fight's happening all over the place. The bear gets a bash on top of the Razor, and now Razor so should be able to kill the bear once again. Lone Druid just resummoned that. So that's going to be a huge hit to his damage once again. He's trying to run away without a bear, without a paddle. Does get caught up with the Meepo Net, who threw out like 20 of them all in a row. Now he will not be able to run away because Meepo has that Geo Strike. Geo Strike OP as crap, and this is a dead, dead, dead Lone Druid. He's going to go join his bear in the grave. And then he buys back and does what? Exactly, nothing. Um, his bear's on cooldown. He should have just chilled out and just stayed back. Maybe they'll lose a Rax, sure, but he would have been back up by that time. Because <clears throat> there was going to be enough people here to defend. Lone Druid did not have to buy back. He is not absolutely useless right now, but he is more or less useless. Especially since he's uh, building around his bear, which he doesn't have for 50 seconds. <clears throat> At the very least, his right click still kind of hurts. Storm Spirit gonna go ahead and farm a few creeps. And by the looks of it, like surprisingly on the board, it's only a two tower advantage in the Radiant's favor, but it feels like the Dire have had a chokehold on this game for quite a while. And honestly, the Radiant have been dominating this game, surprisingly. Um, it's probably because of all the fights that Luna has been able to survive, all the beautiful uh, setups that Centaur has been able to get for his team. Uh, the XP graph is also showing the same exact picture where the Radiant were pretty much having a nice little stranglehold with the Dire. All of a sudden got a huge, huge, huge dip towards their favor. And that's mainly because of that Roshan fight that we just saw. Oh, 
and I hear nets, nets galore, nets flying on top of somebody, this is a net, kept on top of a whole bunch of people, Meepo gets a whole bunch of poof damage, free damage for him, Death Rubber goes down, Bloodstone does get healed on top of everybody, now Meepo does go down, and the Flame does get popped by the Bristle, who's trying to come in full man mode, but it's not really going to be doing much except for dying here very soon, does get healed, does pop himself a magic wand, does take some burn damage coming out from the bear once again, and he's still trying to run away, Centaur Stump does miss, and he should be able to make us on the live. The bear is still doing a whole bunch of burn damage to him. Razor's here on the front. Razor does have his ulti up. The bear is going to be losing a whole bunch of armor here very soon. Ulti from uh, Elder Titan does catch a few people. Lunar does come back for the fight. She does get burned to death. And now we got uh, Elder Titan trying to go for the man fight. Does get the kill on top of the bear because of that return to an order. And now we got Lone Druid once again losing all of his armor, losing all his beautiful stuff. And does go down. Blame mode popped from Centaur. He's trying to run away. But Bruce says, bro, I got snot. It does like no damage at all. And he's going to be going down. Negative armor for all. The dead Centaur is dead. Bristle picked up the kill on that. Tower and there's a Bristle surviving the fight because of that region from the Vanguard. Radiant structures now, are fortified. I will keep saying this that Vanguard light game is not all that useful because it only blocks 40 damage. And armor is much better. But the region that you get for Vanguard still can't be negated. That is a whole entire eight region he's getting right now from Vanguard. Radiant's oh, bottom six. tower. Six is region under he's attack. getting from Vanguard. Which is pretty much what kept him alive. Because uh Bristleback, like Bristleback plus or his ability called Bristleback plus the region is also oh, this is a really good combination. Attack. It means that he'll be able to uh, leverage his region and be able to survive more damage than he should be able to because he's regening up very fast. Which is why hearts are really nice and also hoods, hood of defiances. The reason why Hood of Defiance is really good is because that is, a single, is under that is the only item that you can get the single most raw HP region. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking heart, like, percentage base. I'm talking about, like, flat region numbers. 11 region is what you get from that. Oh, I'm sorry, 8. My fault. 8 HP region is what you get from that. I think if you get a pipe, you get 11. Uh -huh. So I lied, guys. A pipe of inside is the single most raw HP region that you can get from a single item. So, if you're playing a Bristleback and you build a Pipe of Insight, just know you're in good hands. Because not only do you get the magic resist, but you also get the crazy, crazy region. <coughs> cool Blue, how do you know all these crazy facts about Dota? Because I'm a nerd. Leave me alone. It's my job. Or, it's my hobby. It's not really a job. I hope it's not a job. So, people moving around the map. Um, 230. 85 last hits for Lone Drew, but he doesn't really have much to show for it. Um, <clears throat> well, he does have a Radiant Spear, and he also has a Bastion and AC, so he has a lot to show for it. <clears throat> but I mean, he doesn't have much in the sense that he doesn't have a heart yet, and I really would like to see Lone Drew get himself a heart, or at least put that Maelstorm on the bear. <clears throat> so the bear can attack fast, because who doesn't want a very fast attacking bear? And no, look, the bear moves at 522. Fast bear is fast. So the bear is moving at max move speed, guys. Uh, Lone Druid can move at max move speed if he wanted to, but he's totally not going to because he doesn't want to. And no, uh, the bear's attack speed is 545. I think 400 is the max you can have. Which, like, I guess it goes down. Hmm? Is, it, is that it? No, no, I don't know. <coughs> Shackle Shot does come from Winner and does land on top of Lone Druid's Bear, and this is ulti from Razor coming up very soon. The Razor will not be able to catch the Bear because, like I said, the Bear moves at max movement speed, so these guys have zero, zero chances of catching up with him, unless they get a Meepo net, which the net could have flew a little bit earlier, but he didn't know that was going to the initiate was about to happen. Meepo poofing all his Meepos, just clear that creep wave, and he'll have it up in another three seconds. Um, fun fact, Blink Dagger Meepo does do a whole bunch of damage. A uh, Poof does a whole, a whole entire 140 damage. Assuming all the Meepos are in the same spot where they poof to. Okay, this defeats Blink Dagger, doesn't it? Sorry, let's call it the Blink Dagger. So you have a, you have your main Meepo blink forward and pop poof, and all the other Meepos pop poof at the same time. That's going to be one Meepo doing two poofs worth of damage. So that's 280. And then you have all the other Meepos doing four poofs worth of damage. So that's four times 140, which is whatever that number is. So six times 140 total, which is like a lot of damage. Like, I don't know, 700 damage or something like that. 800 maybe. A storm spray getting caught in that does be shot through a tree. It also goes down as well. Easy kill is easy. Not other time. He gets a nice little storm. Doesn't really do much. The radiance bear is going to be waking everybody back up. Um, sorry, wrong team. Anyway, other time does get his ulti off. Beautiful ulti positioning. He does catch a whole bunch of people. Razor BKB is popping right now, but it doesn't really matter when right clicks are going low right now. Uh, other time trying to get some damage off. He does go down to the tower by looks of it, and that's going to be a kill for them. But Meepo's 5v. 5v1 right now, Lone Druid does resummon the bear, the bear is going to be going down, and there's a lot of kill, a lot of death going towards Lone Druid, he really wishes he had a little bit more damage, or just a little bit more survivability, it's an ultra kill from Nico. 
Because guys, don't forget, it's 9v5. Radiance bottom tower has if Nepo uses his Nepo. So all in all, the fight does go in the favor of the Diary, mainly because Meepo didn't die, did not die fast enough. But um, <clears throat> as far as item choices go, I would love to see somebody on the Radiant side build a BKB Radiant's because Meepo's damage, is under while yes, he does have some nice right click damage coming out from Geo's oh, yeah. which I think is, yes, yeah, physical, no, I don't have to, I think it's magical. Yeah, that can be fun. And um, there's, there's nothing you can Radiance do about Geo Strike. All I had to do is sit there and take it a four step away and pray it didn't get hit for two seconds. Radiance bottom because it lasts for two seconds. Radiance bottom barracks has fallen. Radiance bottom barracks has fallen. <clears throat> doesn't say how long Geo Strike lasts. Anyway, Stormspear is going to come forward, try to get the kill on top of Bristle. Bristle is going to take a little bit of damage, but he's not going to take all that much because Stormspear is behind him right now. Stormspear will be getting the solace, or sorry, does get the Orchid Burn on top of him. Bristle pretty much felt none of it, and he's actually going to continue to run away because he has a heart. He has a lot of HP. Now we got a low, uh, now we got Death Rock a little bit of trouble. does eat a whole bunch of damage. Centaur trying to get the kill on top of Meepo. Meepo a little bit too survival. Blade Mail does come from um, Centaur. Really wish that Meepo power proof, but it doesn't really matter. He goes down as well as Meepo. And now we got Death Rock plus Lone Druid, uh, plus Stormspear running away. Uh, Elpo Titan does come in, try to get the stomp, but it's not going to be able to get it while he's silenced up and runs away. And the mechanism is going to be popped by the Wind Runner, and he's got with his VL to make away with the Great Escape. So the Dyer got a bottom set of racks, and they also got a few kills. They lost their Meepo, yes, but they got the Lone Druid and his Bear, and they also got the Centaur. So, there you have it, guys. The fight continues on, and Lone Druid's level 25, and he's finally getting himself some magic resistance, which I think he needs a BKB too. Um, a pipe of Vintai is going to be nice for him and his bear, yes, but the uh, BKB is going to be really nice for, well, him and his team. Mainly because that means he survives. If the main lone druid survives, then the bear can continue to do his damage, and that means the AC stays up, which is armor for everybody. Uh, the burn stays up, which is damage on top of everybody on the dire side, and all in all, it's going to help everybody stay alive a little bit more, if lone druid stays alive. So that's what I mean by that. And they do find a Windrunner who four steps forward does just barely gets out of dodge. Sadly, Lundra right clicked. And now we got an L Titan actually chasing a Lundra. Lundra just might get pinter attacked here. Uh, he's going to get surrounded by. Nope, nobody's surrounding going on. Uh, L Titan does throw out the Astral Spirit. Astral Spirit does not do anything. Bristleback pops up a Blade Mail a little bit preemptively, I will admit. Probably should have waited until he got a Vortex in and then popped it after the Vortex. Because that's when all the damage will be coming to him anyway. Uh, but some damage coming towards the bear. Not going to be enough to actually force. Won't you to do much. And now, like, the Maelstrom's coming on through. Death Prophet ulti going on through, bounce on top of everybody. The Maelstrom is finally on the bear, so yes, thank you, Lone Druid. Because <clears throat> he wants to go on some pipe on this side. Now we got the ulti for Elton, oh, gonna be catching everybody. The bear's in a little bit of trouble, it's gonna be going out here very soon. Lone Druid doesn't have another reason for 50 seconds. But the Bloodstone does pop from Lone Druid, oh, does pop from Stone Street, keeps the bear alive a little bit. Now the bear goes down. Not a lot of damage output coming off the radiant anymore, and it'll be backing away. Meanwhile, Luna pops her ulti, gets a few bounces on top of a few people, but it's not really gonna be enough to kill anybody. Death Prophet ulti still bouncing around, doing a whole bunch of damage, but not enough. And now we got Meepo catching a, a dead, dead, dead. Dead Luna in the woods, and she does go down. And now we got all the ghosts calling from Death Rider coming back to heal her. Uh, she can't turn around and try to turn on Wind Runner because Wind Runner is desperately trying to get this kill on top of his low life or low HP uh, Death Rider, but she has all the HP in the world. And now Roshan's back up, so Meepo and plus a wild Bristleback are going to casually go kill it. And this is the third Roshan. Yeah, Geo Strike lasts for. I don't know, it's only 28 damage, but when you have 5 Meepos doing it all at the same time, it's a lot of damage and it hurts. Roshan has fallen to the dive. And nobody's gonna pick up Aegis? Meepo? Meepo has 2 hearts. He picks up cheese. And Magic Wand needs to be sold by Bristle. Sell Magic Wand, please. Bristle? Bristle? Bristle, sell magic wand and pick up. Oh, okay. They're gonna give it to Elton. Bristle! Yo, bro, Bristle, you're ages. There's gonna have a picnic. Okay. And it goes to Elder Titan, which I do not agree with. Um, I think Elder Titan is probably the last person you want to have Aegis in this team composition. Um, Bristleback doing significantly more. Yes, sure, Bristleback pops his blade mail and then pops a few quills and then dies. And then he wants to come back alive and does the same exact thing over and over. But the fact of the matter is, Bristle is a little bit more important for these guys to actually win the fight. 
And uh, Meepo actually gets to cheese two Bristleback, so Bristle can actually stay alive and try to do that. Um, I, I think I think it'd be a lot more effective if Bristle did pick up the Aegis, so that way he can come back alive and then give Elder Titan the cheese, so he can pop it if he needs to. So that, because Elder Titan really does need the mana as well. There's nothing not to forget. Bristle, relative to his mana pool, relative to his ability cost, he doesn't need that much mana. Three Bloodstone charges up on Storm Spirit. That is how you know the game is going south very fast. Death Prophet only has four and her hands are still in the air because she just gives zero cares. And Invis runes up on Meepo. If he wants to, I don't know if he picked it up. But he picked up Illusion Rune. But he's surrounding an Invis Rune like, hey look guys, look at this. Razor denies it. Wow, what a jerk. Zips up! Storm Spirit zips all the way forward, tries to get killed on Meepo, but this is the wrong Meepo. This Meepo is actually really survivable, has three hearts on top of him. It's going to take a long time to kill his illusion. Meepo does poof on top of his illusion because you can definitely do that. This is a dead Storm Spirit if you just try to kill an illusion. And now Luna does come forward, she is here ready to fight, but um, she might die here very soon. But yeah, Meepo can poof on his illusions. That is one fun fact that nobody really plays on anymore because nobody really uses it. So Mets style Meepo with three hearts. Hmm. I know this doesn't make sense that Meepo has so many hearts, but I really would like to see him have uh Actually no, he needs stats, you're right, you're right. So heart is heart is good. Heart is good on Meepo. Because region won't do much. Anyway, here's the illusion mid. Will he poof to him is a big question. The answer is no, because that one will be poofing away. <laughs> Finally. And here's Meepo with eggs plus tranquil boots needs to go ahead and upgrade those to the channel. Middle by now. Barracks are under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. And oh look, Lone Druid in the background. Wow, Lone Druid trying to go for the back door. No creeps inside the base, so no ba sorry, back door region galore on top of these things. And now, Lone, uh, sorry, now Razor will be stealing all the damage from the bear. The bear moves back in the way. Uh, they will be trying to kill the creep wave, sure, but they're not really going to do much. Lone Druid almost got shackled to a tree, but he did just move a little bit far away. Just, just enough, just enough to make it out of there. Does have a whole bunch of region coming out from the pipe of insight, and also able to keep him alive versus the Meepo. And he, now he really wishes he had some way to TP out, because the whole entire dice out are converging on his position. At this point, the Radiant really, really, really need to be taking advantage of the fact that the middle racks are way wide open, because Lone Druid is going to die here very soon. Uh, Meepo is here, everybody else is here, the net from Meepo does fly, does miss, does catch the bear, and Lone Druid trying to get himself a TP scroll, does get himself a TP scroll, start to TP out, uh, Meepo will be able to get the net, and that will not come through, holy crap, Lone Druid makes it alive, safe, is what they say right now. And that is one of the drawbacks of playing your Meepo as a one person, or sorry, playing your Meepo as a one person unit, as opposed to a five separate units. Uh, when you try to throw all your nets at once, you miss, you will not be able to throw your net again. Because nobody else has any more stuns. Luna does have a Lunasa Beam, but Luna is not here. She's like way down there. And she's on the side. Sorry. Radiance top tower um, Elotan does have a stomp, but I don't know if it'll land it fast enough. Luna is going to have a shackle. Not sure if she threw it. Not sure if she got into position to throw it. Anyway, all that aside, guys. The Radiant do live to fight another day. Radiance top tower has fallen. And uh, so I want you to to fight another day, and the base is gonna be getting sieged by the Radiant. Uh, will they be able to defend this? Is a big question. Meepo's here with three hearts. All of the hearts are on the down now, uh, because they did take damage, and now Death Harbor Ulti is gonna be doing a little bit of damage to everybody. No fortify left for the Radiant. A uh, Storm does stood forward, does catch a Razor. Razor's damage is actually just kind of keep these guys in the window a little bit. I will admit that. So he's an important target. Now we got a lot of damage coming towards Meepo. Meepo does get caught. With the whole bunch of damage, he's about to be going down. He does finally go down. Lone Druid Bear is trying to do what, his, what he can, but he's not going to be able to do much. And he, I don't know if he has buyback. I don't know if he has buyback, but if he has buyback, he should buy back now. And uh, now we got the Aegis getting popped up. Other time, we got Razor still alive. Still a lot of HP left. And the buyback's up on Lone Druid, but he has no bear right now. So all he's going to be able to do is just stand there and roll at him. This is what Lone Druid does, bro. That's what Lone Druid does. Those are his rabbit. Might be able to go for a little bit of damage stop at Elder Titan, but uh, everybody has hearts now. And the axe is up on uh, Razor. So that means more negative armor. Tower damage now. I don't know if the negative armor works on towers though. Which would be pretty sick if it did. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. This is the last of the racks for the Radiant. Uh, Lone Druid Bear should be back up. Ten, okay, well, 10 seconds. 
And the nets do fly for Meepo. This looks like this would be a death of Lone Jewel. He did throw all his nets, and that's the silence on Lone Jewel. Lone Jewel will be not able to pop his uh, rabbit. Does pop himself a TP scroll instead, and TP's like two feet in front of him. He does go down a little bit off, a little bit off on that quick. And uh, it's probably very sad about that, because he would have made that out of the way. And meanwhile, Storm Spirit does zip forward, tries to get a little bit of damage. Does get himself a nice little vortex and top him one on it, but she's not, no damage to follow up on top of that, only the silence. Since our one on ulti does fly through, just keep him alive a little bit. Uh, Death from ulti does fly as well. The ancient is still alive. I wish guys be able to make this a uh, game to fight for. It looks like the answer is no. Meeple's nets are flying everywhere. Nets is going left, nets are going right. The ancient explodes in the middle, and Razor's ult is going on. So I hope you guys aren't prone to seizures because if you are, I apologize. Yeah. It's gonna sit there and stare at us now. The eye of the storm. Just seizure, 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 seizure. Anyway. So, in order to avoid all the strobe lights, oh, okay, it ended, it, yeah, it ended, anyway, my name is Cold Blue. I just bought you guys this view replay cast that was sent in by the one, the only, Husky on Bristleback, uh, but he was telling me to focus on the Meepo because he built three hearts, so I was like, oh, okay, whatever, it's, yeah, it's a Meepo, it's a Meepo, what else is he gonna build, he can't build, like, well, he could, he could build a tornado stick, could save his life, a bit of you. Like I said, my name is Cool Blue. I hope you guys enjoyed the match. I'm not going to spend too much time anal analyzing things because I talked about armor for too long. And that's pretty much what I'll talk about mainly anyways. About, oh, this person needed more armor. This person needed more of this. This person needed more of that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys whenever.